Hey buddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome to Let's Play Civilization 6 as China in her Emperor tutorial series. So uh, what I was thinking of last time was that I wanted to maybe try to build six farms to get the boost for feudalism, but I'm just accepting the fact that I have a really high culture per turn generation and that I'm not going to get the boost for feudalism and instead I'm going to get my settlers in position and then just wait for feudalism to finish so that I can plug in the extra two builder charges because when we build our cities we're going to get a free builder because we have the district building, uh, the government district building called Ancestral Hall which gives us plus uh, a free builder when we settle a city and it gives us a production towards settlers which is why we're building so many settlers right now so uh now is probably a good time to actually plot out where we are settling exactly one really annoying thing is that every time you place a pin it takes you out of this map mode but i know i'm settling there um okay so if we're settling there we want to settle the coastline as thinly as possible so that we can place as many um Seaside resorts, one, two, three. And we want to settle on tiles that we can't normally place a seaside resort. So for example, this hill right here is a really good tile to settle. Uh, so we will settle that. And we'll be placing a water park here later. This will give appeal to all of these water tiles. We're just trying to optimize our long term. Uh, tourism is a, is a is an interesting victory type because you have to do you do have to really do a lot of optimization now if I settle these two cities one two three one two three I could settle a city in here on this hill which would allow me to get a really good theater square um, adjacent to these wonders so I will go for that as well we'll settle right there okay so that's three of three more cities settled that'll bring us up to a total of seven there's definitely a city going over here but I need a little bit more information I'm gonna send this archer up here to explore um, and in fact I'm going to... I don't know what to use this builder for, so we'll just think about our settles for now. But we know these are our next three settles, so that's going to cover the settlers that are currently coming out. I need more information before I make decisions about down here and stuff. I definitely want to settle another coast line, coastal city to take advantage of one, two, three. So maybe like right here on this, since it's out of range of this city, and it'll gather as many of these flatland tiles in, in range as possible. It also is on the edge of the negative loyalty. So I think this might be a good city to settle as well. And then by proxy, settling along this river would be quite good. Do I want to settle on the right or the left? I think I want to open this up to another city, so I'll settle on the left side of this river. It seems okay. Um, one, two, three. So the closest I can settle is in here. I would like to settle for fresh water. That would leave me open to one, two, three. That would leave me open to somebody stealing this from me. But I'm not really super hyped about getting this, and it's kind of far away. And I think I'd like to just settle here. The question is, though, that would be in range to turn this into a national park if I settle right there. One, two, three. One, two, three. No, I'd have to settle right here. Okay. That will allow me to turn this mountain range into a national park later on in the game, uh, if I so choose. I just want to keep my options open. So I want to settle on the edge of the negative, negative loyalty. I want to settle to capture the land that I have. There could be another city or two up here. Depends on how things go for me. Um, I'm going to continue exploring with you as well. So this builder, now I need to make a decision what, what I do with him. Um, I think che Chengdu could really use some farms. It's going to be a city that struggles because I've basically killed all of its production long term, which is fine because the city has done mostly what it needs to achieve, which is help me get my empire established in the early game. So I'm going to build some farms over there to help it grow. It has good things to work. It just, um, you know, <clears throat> I, gimped, I gimped the city a little bit, but it was a worthwhile gimping because it gave me enough stuff to do other stuff. Um, so here's a pretty tough question. Did the Khmer get a religion is the question I need to ask. So Khmer... Okay, the Khmer did not get a religion. Am I competing with three religions on this continent? I am. The Khmer didn't get a religion. So depending on whether or not... Damn, I didn't get knowledge of their cities. I could generate a lot of Golden Age points for converting them. So I'm going to take Exodus the Evangelist. It gives me something to spend my faith on this era. And uh, we'll get some missionaries and get down there and get converting them. 
we are going to pick up now we have machinery so we can upgrade it to crossbowmen if we need to we can also build crouching dragons whatever they're called i'd like to get the mercenaries tech before i really go for any upgrades but i also want to get divine right so that i can maybe get mont saint michel you go here unit needs orders mont saint michel is a medieval era wonder which i don't think i can chop into right yeah I really want to get the Colosseum. Where could I build it? If this... It's really hard to find a place to build this. I want to build it in my capital, but if I can't build it in my capital, I could build it here. If I built it here, it would hit 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... It hit so many cities, so I think what we do in this city is we need to get it to 10 pop, which means we need lots of farms and we need chops on these jungle tiles. Um, that's going to be rough. Did I ever upgrade Magnus? I did, so at least the city won't lose population, which is good. <clears throat> Farm. Scout. Negative loyalty in here. You're going to scout up here. Okay, he does not yet have a religion. That's a really good sign. I'm going to purchase a missionary next turn and start converting his cities. Oh, he just got a religion from Poland. And they're using apostles, so I can't do that. Right, that's that plan axed. Oh. 100 hours is actually pretty good. Let's go ahead and, and get that suzerain bonus. We have that nice housing. Um, right, farm. Keep growing. Scout unit needs orders. Scout here. So we have another settler finishing. This settler is going here. We're not going to actually settle the city yet. You're going to come back up here to do a little bit of fog busting to the this tile. Just want to make sure no barbarians pop up and ruin my day. So again, more settlers. More farms. The city now has... Plenty of housing. We need to get this city to 10 pop so that we can build a Colosseum. You're scouting this way. You're scouting this way. Unit needs orders. We are not settling until we have feudalism because we want to get the extra value out of our build charges. Delaying a city settled by a couple of turns. Not that bad if you get a good bit of value out of it. Oh, I definitely want this guy. I definitely want Hildegard of Bingen. Hildegard of Bingo. I don't want to sell any of my great works in this game because I'm using them for tourism. Don't want to settle you yet. You are going to purchase this tile so that we can place a farm. This will also get boosted by feudalism. The city now has nine population room. We're also going to get the pearls resource online. I um, think I'll purchase a builder in here. Oh, I should have waited two turns. I'm an idiot. God damn it. I do this all the time. I like, think, oh yeah, I just really need a builder. And then I do it. And I'm like, oh yeah, I should have waited. But it's not a big deal. These are like, these are small little optimization mistakes that uh, somebody who is able to concentrate more on the game and less trying to explain what they're doing um, would not make. No hour of life is wasted. Not the end of the world. Um, right. Settler. Head there. And do we, now the question is, do we go for another settler? I think the answer is yes. We have room for another three. Potentially another five. So that's one, two, three. Um, where do we settle over here? We could potentially get two natural parks here, right? One, two, three. If we place one, place a city here, we could get a natural park here and here so i think this is the place to place what that means though if, is if we place a city to this eastern side we don't want to place it in range of these mountains because we have to place it away from these tiles can't place it here or here because that means i can't build a national park although maybe i could we'll see I could definitely place a city 
like right here one, two, three, and right here do I want to do that sure we'll place the city here and then we'll place another one on this wine and that way we've packed in a bunch of cities into a very small amount of area and that'll really help us out right uh, you're parked there for fog busting. You're waiting one more turn. You've done your scouting. You're continuing to scout. <clears throat> you're creating another great work for me. Lovely. I will go to the next turn. I need to get a um, amphitheater up for more great work room. My knowledge of Stirrups has advanced. There's feudalism. We are going to immediately plop in the plus two. Bum, 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 bum. Plus two builder charges. Now that we have that, we can immediately start popping down our cities. Boom. And you're going there. You're going there. This gives us a five build charge. This gives us a six build charge builder that we can immediately get to work on what? This is probably all going to be farms in here. Mm. Probably not these tiles eventually. These will be these will be seaside resorts, so it'll probably be a forest right there. In fact, these two will be forests when we get to conservation. So I might not build. I might not even build farms here. Um, this could be an entertainment district, though, right here. Uh, what do I want to build in here? I want to build harbors, for sure. So let's prioritize those over industrial zones. Although I do want the production from industrial zones, or, or production from the boost that industrialization or that apprenticeships give mines, right? And by delaying that, we can settle here and then improve this pearls and also get another, I get a uh, science boost towards uh, this. All right. You know, I just don't think we really focus on building anything here. We just quickly get the monument up. That'll help the city develop. I think we chop the jungle. That'll get the monument a little bit quicker. We choose our civic here and we go for uh divine right so that we can maybe get Mont Saint Michel after we finish this next settler. You can't do anything. Scout here one last time. I think that's the final bit of scouting we're gonna do with these guys and then we're gonna bring them back to make sure we're not undefended. So she felt like that was her land here that I settled, which is absurdity. So I'm gonna promise I won't settle near her. And we'll see how she feels about that. What's her army like? It's time to scout. Uh, 153. So she's actually not that much stronger than me. Poland is super strong. My relationship is not very good with Poland. That is not good. Open borders. Gold. You'll pay me. Okay. Let's check what this is. Okay. She's disappointed that I don't make much faith. Um, I'm going to need to park units near here to see if I spot any um, Polish units. I really need scouts over here too. Let's start sending warriors to fog bust and make sure Poland doesn't do any sneaky stuff to me. Okay. Do we move Magnus from here? I think we move Magnus to Taiwan. Reassign Magnus to Taiwan. Then we assign Liang to Beijing. Right. Well, Chengdu is probably where we're going to build builders, so we'll assign it to there. We'll swap them, basically. We'll chop here. That'll get the monument almost done. It'll grow the city. There's Toronto. Not exactly the kind of city-state that we were hoping to find, but it'll do. Okay, there's a the knowledge of military engineering. I think that was from building an aqueduct. We definitely want to unlock medieval walls and renaissance walls at this point now. Um... So we're going to get to work on that because we almost have monarchy and monarchy gives us housing from walls. We finished the aqueduct in here. What's more important, the barracks or the holy site? Let's see. Uh, we could get a great general. I don't think that's going to be important. I think I'd rather just get my yields up. I could also get a builder in here. Let's have a look at the terrain. This could be improved. This could be improved. There's a lot of tile improvements in here that would greatly help this city. Um... So I think a builder makes sense, which means Liang makes sense over here. So we're going to swap Liang um, to Changsha. 
and then we'll put Victor in um, Chengdu. You're going there. You're going there. Uh, I have gold to purchase things. I don't think I really want to purchase things. We're just going to get you to hang on. You're coming forward now to fog bust. Let's see, Yaivarman, do you want to be a friendship? Okay, Yaivarman will take a friendship. That's good. I want to prevent him from going to war with us. That means we don't have to worry about defending against him, right? Because he won't declare war on us because he's our friend. This guy is on guard duty. Um, these guys are moving out for guard duty as well. Okay, there's a bit of knowledge. If Poland at attacks in the next like 30 turns, I'm basically dead. Um, it's really unfortunate, but it's the truth. All right. We'll do this. We'll get rid of that pin. We'll go here. We're going to improve this because we want the boost for celestial navigation. Um, in fact, I'm going to prioritize that. Because I want to build harbors in these coastal cities because I don't want to use up land tiles for... Um, I don't want to use up land tiles for... <clears throat> I don't want to use up land tiles for harbors or for commercial hubs and I still want to get trade routes so because trade routes are useful for international trading to get extra tourism um, so again I think we just go monument here I want the borders to grow really is the logic you're going to settle right there I'm going to delete that pin similarly um, I really want to place a theater square But I'd have to purchase that tile and chop there first. Uh, I should do ancient wall chopping, really, is what I should be doing here, actually. It's a mistake to not do so. It's okay. It's only a minor mistake. We can still use it. Um, Upgrades-wise. Now, Reina is pretty important for the late game and tourism. Amani, Pingala... Grants is really good. I could get Pingala. I think we're going to start building up Pingala in the capital once I feel like my religion is well established. Don't forget, I'm also going to get uh, error score for converting my own cities. Whoa, why does it say there's no pressure? Is it because these cities are fresh? So fresh and so clean, clean. Alright. So we want to keep him here because he's providing religious pressure that's going to help all of our cities flip, which will give us error score, which will mean we're more likely to get a golden age. And a renaissance golden age is really, really powerful because it's the last era that you can get uh, monumentality. And that means that you're typically going to have a fairly good faith generation around them, which means you can get a lot of you can get a lot of value out of, out of monumentality. Um, Position yourself on the bananas. Then we're going to just back you up a tile to here. You're still exploring. Good job. Okay, France considers the promise I made to them broken. I'm not going to trade for that luxury because I actually have a copy of it in my lands. I need fog busting. All right, France wants war. France wants blood again. Has our army... The really thing to watch out for is has our army score gone up? And it has. It has gone up a lot. Um, that's really bad news. I need this. I don't have enough gold. Which means I need to quickly finish Divine Right and go for Mercenaries. That'll take... Do I have enough time to do this? Do I have enough time to get Monarchy first? I kind of have to have enough time. So if I don't have enough time, I'm just dead. I don't want this wheat here because I want this to be a seaside resort later on in the game so I could just extract it force the city to grow a bunch which we are going to do you're staying there you're scouting Poland yeah, seeing French units on your border is not good, especially when she has crossbowmen and you don't. And I need a few turns before I can afford crossbowmen. Um, harvest out the settler. You head down there. Okay. I'm going to get the Heavy Chariot here because that'll give my cities a higher base combat strength. Currently my base combat strength is based on the um, 
Well, the Crouching Tiger is actually cheaper than Crossbowman. I didn't know that. Interesting. Okay. Um, this would give my cities plus 8 combat strength, which I think would be helpful. Although it's going to finish about the same time that I get the Crossbowman, which will give me plus 10 combat strength anyway. So maybe that's a waste of time. Maybe I would be better off just grabbing that monument, getting a little bit of more culture and border growth. Yeah, she's coming into my territory. That's really worrisome. And all I ask okay, there's Celestial Navigation. That's an important district. Now we can finally get a friendship for the, for the plus one production on mines. Um, monument completed here. I want the amphitheater really bad so they have a place to place my great works of writing. Ideally, I would actually purchase it in this city because otherwise it's going to take 36 turns because I crippled the city's production. I crippled the city's production for good reason, though, right? It wasn't like I did it willy-nilly. Um, I had good reasons to do it. I need a city to grow. It needs a builder. Takes so long to get a builder in here. Alright, I guess that city's kind of on its own for a bit. So, I'm thinking... I'm thinking Colosseum right here, okay? That has this city in range, that has this city in range, that has this city in range, that has one, two, three, four, five, that has this city in range. So that's like a... That's like a seven-city Colosseum, if I can get it. And I think I can get it if I can get the city up to ten population, but this city is really bad production, so I'm going to need to use builders to build it, which is fine. Because I need to use builders to build it anyway. I'm going to go ahead and chop here. I'm going to chop both of this to force growth to um, pop ten. I'm not putting a farm here because these are going to be lumber mills later. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm going to try to avoid double improving tiles. I'm going to try to avoid improving a tile that I plan to turn into something else later. Which is something I usually don't avoid because I don't think it's worth it. But I'm going to do it for the sake of this series. Um, Alright, let's chop here. Let's go for the, not the granary, sorry. Ancient walls so that we can use wall chop abuse. Did you finish that monument first? Uh... Archer, scout. So I'm just trying to reveal more of the terrain. The more knowledge I have of the map, the better decisions I can make. There's Divine Right. We will be switching to Divine Right because it gives us plus one housing from walls. We will be building walls in all of our cities to the maximum level because we're going for a tourism victory. Because walls give you tourism in the late game. Okay, that's the logic of this decision. Also, nicely, it'll also allow us to plug in the Bastions or the Retainers. I think I'm going to plug in Bastions so some of my cities are a little bit scarier because I really don't want to have to get into a war right now. I want to avoid war if at all possible. I could put in Gothic ar Architecture. It's probably not a great idea. Um, and I'm going to just take Charismatic Leader. There's Knowledge Towards Castles, which is another wall tech, which is great because that's the wall tech that we want to get next. We are going to head to castles. You're waiting there. I want to chop here to force the city to grow. And then I want to get it get it to nine pop and then chop again to get... Um, I guess you can go improve that. Okay, that's fine there. You're fine there. You're scouting for me still. I don't want to sell any of my great works, no matter how much value I can get out of them. It's just not worth it. I need that tourism generation. If you look up in the current standings, you can see right here, I'm generating 27 tourism t per turn compared to most other players, fairly low amounts. Um, you know, I don't have any tourists yet, but I have generated quite a bit of tourism with most of these guys. Something else that's really important is you don't actually generate tourism against people if you haven't met them so that's going to be pretty important that i actually meet these people in the next reasonable amount of time so getting my hands on caravels reasonably soon is pretty important in fact i might go ahead and start working on that in my coastal cities pretty much immediately this will finish the walls we can overflow into an into a harbor um i think i might also build an entertainment complex oh no i meant to put a water park there the, the entertainment complex isn't the worst. It's just, again, another small mistake. I want the entertainment complex to give plus one a appeal to these two seaside resorts that I plan to build here and here. But it 
probably would have been better to do something else, but it's okay. Uh, we'll put a harbor there. Work on ancient walls, purchase this tile, drop this tile, boom, that'll finish your ancient walls. Um, settler here. Okay, where is my current... I know I sent a settler somewhere. Right, you're heading there. You jump up on the hill. You go to here. Okay, so I have one more settler. I need two more. Sorry, I need three more. Two are building, so I need another one built after this. I need to harvest these bananas. But I need to wait. Till the city is really... Mm, I guess I could harvest them now. Take 12 turns for you to grow. I'll take this jungle tile as well. We'll build this. And then we'll harvest this jungle tile. That'll force growth you on up to level um, thingy. And then we'll be good to go. So harvesting is always the right move in the current version of the game. It's probably not going to be always the right, room, right move when Gathering Storm comes around. It's almost never worth it to not harvest. Um, almost never. Okay, we're going to place these harbors down. These harbors need to be built. We're going to harvest this. I'm going to put a mine here because I want the production in the short term. The city already has plenty of housing, so I want, you know, production. The difference between an empire that harvests and an empire that doesn't is absolutely massive. Okay, this production tile pretty much single-handedly saved the production quality of the city. Basically doubled the city's production, as did this tile over here. We're going to chop this. Um, you're staying there. Really need a builder over here, because that's where I, I suppose this is where I've planned to chop. Um, likely one of these city settlements, I'll send my builder over to Taiwan to actually get value out of that. Kind of just a little bit busy trying to get other more important stuff up like important infrastructure i want these two harbors done they're going to take a very long time there's mercenaries we are definitely going to plug in the 50 percent production discount thingy um, and immediately get at least one crossbowman so that my cities have a higher combat strength of 33 and my city shots have a higher combat strength as well your city combat your city shot and city strength is based on the strongest uh melee and range strength unit you have right now my crossbowman is my strongest unit it has 30 combat strength so the base combat strength of my cities is 33 uh your city gets extra combat strength based on certain factors so it, i think it's like your strongest melee unit minus 10 and then the city gets combat strength based on other stuff uh and then your ranged attack strength is your strongest range attack I think it's a straight up your strongest range attack, so. Uh, guilds. This is always a bit of an awkward, awkward time in the tech tree because we are, we have several things that we would like to do. I'd like to build the Mont Saint Michel, but I don't think I'm ever going to get it. If I got the Mont Saint Michel, it would give me a way to generate tourism relics. But diplomatic service is almost always a really good thing to get when you're playing against a high difficulty AI because it will give you the ability to uh, turn their gold against them by stealing it from them. Shaved a few turns off that. Let's build a mine there. Okay, great. These cities are now building at a much quicker pace. Uh, Yeah, that's fine. Really should have put Magnus over here, but I guess yeah, I couldn't really because that city's only recently settled. It's fine. Um, right, builder. We are going to harvest here. We're now up to 10 pop. We're going to place the entertainment district right there. Now, the unfortunate thing is the city does not have enough production to actually build that in a reasonable amount of time. So we need to figure out where we're going to get some production from. <laughs> uh, I kind of screwed myself here a little bit. It's okay. We do have a chop here. Um, we don't care about being inefficient. We just need to get to the things, right? We just need to get to the important things. Um, the important thing right now is to get this entertainment complex built with a um, 
arena in it so that we can start building the uh, thingy. So expending a bunch of resources to get it a little bit quicker is 100% worth it. And okay, you're almost in position. You're almost in position. We're working on castles. Okay, go get the pearls online. Temple of Artemis is over here. Looks like he's building the Kotuku Inn. I keep calling these female leaders he. Please don't bully me for misgendering these leaders. <laughs> Your delegation is most welcome. Okay, it looks like Poland and France are at war, which is nice. I'm pretty happy about that. It means I don't have to worry about them. It looks like they're busy. Uh, ancient walls. Damn, I didn't mean to finish those here. I meant to chop using them. It's not the end of the world. We can plop down a really nice theater square here. Right there. Right there. Forty-two turns. Can you go help Taiwan? Because Taiwan is sitting on like potentially amazing wealth in here, and we just have not developed it at all. Um, in fact, you're going to go help Taiwan as well. And so are you finish that. You wait there. You go help Taiwan. Yeah, I kind of, I did, I, I made, I made a mistake here. Um, I should have prioritized develop my, developing my cities one by one because I have these massive forests. Because I didn't do that, it didn't really work so well for me. But right, you're gonna settle there. I'm gonna delete that. You're immediately gonna work on a monument because you have negative loyalty. Uh, we're gonna build the horses up because we want the production to build the monument faster. And then you're going to come up and maybe help out with these guys. My people will settle where they please, I'm afraid. So I'm just going to tell him that I'm planning on settling near him again. Um, so he doesn't get super mad. And uh, Monuments. We, need, we want monuments early to spread the borders out. Alright, Taiwan. Let's grab all of these tile wands. Uh, actually, I could build the Mont Saint Michel in this city, and we shall. We we Mont Saint we Mont Saint Michel do that here. All right, you get up here to help this city out. We can get it pretty quick. Probably will be good to plug in that card that gives me production towards wonders, um, but like. I'm building settlers and stuff. Oh shit, I meant to finish building settlers in here. Whoops. Yeah, I'm still making mistakes here and there. It's not the end of the world. I think basically the hard part is done, right? The hard part of winning an emperor game is done and that's surviving the early game. We have survived the early game. Now it's just a matter of optimization. Uh, we are going to chop through the ancient walls. This will give me, this will finish the walls and give me overflow. That I can spend on a harbor for the trade routes because trade routes are good. And okay, okay, okay. These warriors may as well. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, yeah, you go there. Building builders over here in Changsha. We'll keep building builders here because it's the most efficient place. Plop that down there for another amenity. Plop that there. All right, let's have a look. Do you want to buy any of these luxuries from me? Pearls? Hello? So you'd buy pearls for 8 gold per turn. So that's about 270 gold if you add in the fact that he was going to give me gold on top of that so he'll probably take in the region of 250 gold for this that's 150 that is not the number that i had said so 250 plus how much more than 250 so probably not much more 256 255 255 255 is a good amount of gold to get for a luxury um you have all this other stuff that i want to sell you Poland, make a deal. Uh, you would like wine. You have no money. Never mind. 
Uh, Spain. I have pearls. You do not. You don't like me very much, so you won't give me a good deal. I don't think I want to get a bad deal. I guess it is money, though, that I otherwise wouldn't have. So I may as well take it. Probably give me like 120 gold or something ridiculously low. Uh, maybe a little bit more. Uh, no. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Hello. Come on. Oh, there we go. All right. 131 gold. Deal. Sounds good to me, buddy. That puts me up to 500 gold. What could I do with that 500 gold? I could certainly build buy more builders. Um, that would be pretty good value for me. Um, alternatively, I could purchase the amphitheater in a couple of turns. Um, do I want to go for missionaries here? I should be passively spreading my religion. I've got like eight. I've got like a bunch of... Um, Era score locked up in these cities if I convert them. If I don't convert them, I don't get it. So, Faith, do I want to get an Apostle here? Not really. Enhancing my religion doesn't really do much. She uh, has a Crusade pilgrimage. And Defender of the Faith is already gone. So, I think I just get a couple of missionaries here. And use it to spread my religion to get more error score. You're going to go there. Force growth in this city. You go there. You're waiting. I think I'm going to purchase an amphitheater. Ah, run away. There's an archer there. You're coming over to assist. You're also coming over to assist. Your delegation is most welcome. Okay, so she's actually looking like she's being a little bit more friendly. I think she's been so occupied with war that she hasn't had much time to think of bad things to do to me, which I'm kind of okay with. Uh, we will declare friendship. Okay, great. Settler completed here. That is... Of my last three settlers, that is my third last one. So I need just one more. And in fact, I will be going for just one more. We're going to settle right there. We are going to put a mine down. You wait there, you wait there. We're going to spread our religion to these new cities because we want the era score from converting them. That is the most important thing that I am looking for. Chop theirs to actually get the holy site finished so we can get value in the renaissance if we do get the um, golden age which we would really like I might not be able to get it though I should be getting great people soon I mean, we'd be at it. so if I check the here we're pretty close to another great writer in fact nobody is competing for great writers with us which is great uh, well, not much competition for these. Quite a bit of competition for great thingies. I'd love to get this one. I might be able to spend faith on that, actually. I could spend faith to get this. If I spent faith in it, I would get a refund, and I would get extra science out of it. Science is currently my weakest yield. Um, well, I say weakest, but of the two important yields, science and culture, science is the weakest. We're going to put a mine there. Get that holy site done a little bit quicker. You wait there. We're going to purchase the amphitheater. Because we want to wake Homer up For a friend with and get the Odyssey. You fortify there. Right, you're still scouting for me, scout. You're still heading over here. Convert, there's Reformed Church, and we get some era score for converting that city. Nice, that's that dedica dedication bonus working for us. We can probably guarantee ourselves a normal age, maybe not a golden age. Golden age will be a long shot, depending on some factors. Um, right, we converted that city, great. We might be able to convert this guy's cities. We have decent pressure now. Um, if we could get a couple of these converted, I think it would do good work. 
He does have holy sights. So that means he is going to emanate extra pressure for me. The question is, do I save up to purchase this guy, which would help my science? Uh, it's hard to know. It's really hard to know. I think I'm going to harvest here to get the city to grow faster. Plus, I want to open up that tile for seaside resorts later. Okay. Okay. That's going to be the second last settler. That's going to be the last settler. That means we can get rid of the settler card policy uh, once this settler is done. Which is really, really great. Um, let's get some more tile improvements. Alright. So, again, not a lot of uh, optimization and stuff. Really what we're getting... Really, really the sort of plan here is we need to unlock castles and siege tactics. And then we need to build all of our medieval and renaissance walls before we finish... Um, civil engineering because civil engineering makes limes obsolete this card here is limes when we get to civil engineering it says down here makes obsolete policy limes the second last from the bottom so we have to what I'm basically trying to do is I'm trying to get all my cities out as fast as possible so that I can get all those walls once we have all those walls built we will get plus six tourism per city from the walls when we reach conservation so that's kind of that's the logic. That's that's the guiding principle behind what I'm doing. I maybe didn't explain that thoroughly, but basically what I'm trying to do is get my cities built up in a way that I'd also like to get Mont Saint Michel so that I can convert faith into relics um, at will. And it's another wonder, which is you know error score and stuff. But that's kind of the general the general plan right now, and it might not seem obvious how I'm working towards that. I'm getting the entertainment complex. I'm going to want to save up gold to purchase the um, arena and all that sort of stuff. And then I'm going to want builders to try to build this. That's why I'm trying to finish the holy site up here. Uh, I'm trying to finish the holy site here in case I get a golden age in the renaissance era. Because then I can use my faith for other things in the renaissance era. There's a, there's a lot of like things converging right now in my head as I play this game. And I'm probably not doing a very good job of explaining them. But... Um, I think the most important thing, again, I kind of talked about this, is the most important thing is surviving the early game on higher difficulties. Once you survive the early game, the actual strategy that you're going for is largely unchanged based on difficulty. Um, but I think it is worthwhile because we're roughly halfway through the game in terms of quantity of turns. Um, and you can see here, we're generating 35.4 science per turn. Let's have a look at some of these guys. Yeah, you see, we're about on par with the AI right now. Now, there's probably an AI in here that's making anywhere from 50 to 100 science per turn. But if we look at culture, you can see that we're relatively on par in terms of culture as well. So, really, it's just about surviving and then efficiently building infrastructure. Uh, if you can survive and efficiently build infrastructure, you don't need to go to war. The AI and Emperor is not too terrible if you can get past the first, like, 50 to 80 turns without too many problems. Uh, and then it's a fairly standard game from there. You can see here the domination victory, though. Uh, we need, do need to be careful. We're scouting for military score. Now, France and Poland were at war with each other, which was great for me because it gave me a really long time where I could just build up and not worry about building a military. Uh, in terms of religious victory, we are really only concerned with having our religion in our cities purely for to get the benefit of our pantheon and for getting the benefit of church property, which is giving us a lot of gold right now. And if we do build any holy sites, we want to get the benefit of choral music. We don't really want to upgrade our religion um it's a lot of fate to invest in for not a lot of benefit so i'm not really looking to do that right now it is something we might do a little bit later in the game we'll see Castle right there's castles go there you're gonna go there so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get ancient walls we're gonna chop and use the overflow to go into the um mont saint michel so that's it. I'm going to call that the end of this episode. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. Please remember to subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. Remember to leave a like if you want to directly support my channel. And remember to leave a comment if you want to give me your feedback. Other than that, I want to say I love you all very much. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.